What's going on guys, Justin here, and welcome back to our fourth example video following our course on proof writing. Now, today's video is going to be on logical equivalences, so with the introduction out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this first problem. So this problem says, construct a truth table for the statement not p and p implies q. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in two rules here that we're going to use in order to construct this truth table here. Okay, great. So the first table is to show us how to make a truth table for a P and Q statement. And the second table is to show us how to make a table for a P implies Q statement. So we can see for the first table that all of the statements for P and Q are false unless P, both P and Q are true. And we can see for the second table that P implies Q is only false in one case, and that's when P is true and Q is false. So with that in mind, let me go ahead and put in a table for this whole statement here. Okay, there we go. So I've go I went ahead and zoomed out a little bit so we could see our two rules with this full table here. And we can see that this third column is just going to be our table there on the right. So let's go ahead and fill that in. So when P and Q are true, P implies Q is true. When P is true and Q is false, P implies Q is false. When P is false and Q is true, P implies Q is true, and when both are false, P implies Q is true. So lastly, we have to fill in this final column for this truth table. It's worth uh, reminding you that that symbol there means not P. So that part of the AND statement will simply be the opposite of our P column. And a reminder for how our AND statement works, the AND statement is only true if both sides are true. So with that in mind, we can go ahead and make our first two rows false because not P will be false in both of those. And like I said, the end statement is only true if both sides are true. So for both of these next cases, the left-hand side of the end statement will be true. So if the right-hand side of the statement is true, this whole statement will be true. And we can see as we've already filled out our column for the P implies Q, that both of those two cases will be true, which means that these last two cases here for not P and P implies Q will be true. So that finishes this truth table off for this problem. So let's go ahead and get into the next one. So for our second problem, we have construct a truth table for P implies Q or Q implies P. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in our rules for or and P implies Q so we can use them to make a truth table for this statement. All right, there we go. So the P implies Q table is the same as the last one, so I won't go over that. But I will quickly go over the P or Q table. And we can see that uh, P or Q is true every single case except for when both P and Q are false. So now that we have that understanding of the OR rule, I will go ahead and make a table for this entire statement. All right, and there we go. We have the truth table for this statement here. So let's go ahead and quickly fill out the P implies Q and Q implies P column so we can finish this problem off. So we can exactly copy the P implies Q from our chart there above. So we'll have true, false, true, true. And for the Q implies P statement, we can kind of mirror that. But we have to remember that for a one-way implication like this, the only way that it is false is if the right side is false. So let's go ahead and fill it out with that in mind. So this will be true and true here. This will be false because the P is false. And this last one, because both are false, will be true. That brings us to our last column, and we want to remember that the OR statement is only false if both sides of the OR statement are false. So that means the only places where this could possibly be false are when P implies Q and Q implies P are both false. And we can see from our table here that that will never happen, as there are no rows where both of these are false at the same time, which means that this side of the truth table will just be truths. Great. So let's go ahead and get into our third problem. So this problem says, construct a truth table for P implies Q and not Q if and only if R. So I feel like we've gone over the P implies Q table enough and we just did the OR tables. So the only guide table I'm going to include for this problem is the if and only if table, which we have not gone over yet. So here is the guide table for the biconditional statement P if and only if Q. So P if and only if Q is true only if P and Q are the same. So we can see when they're both true, the statement is true, and when they're both false, the statement is true. But if they are different, the statement is false. 
So with that in mind, let me go ahead and put in the table for this entire statement here, and we can finish this problem off. All right, so let's go ahead and start by filling out our P implies Q column. Now, as a reminder, P implies Q is only false when P is true and Q is false. So starting at the top, we will have when both are true, this will be true. And that's for the first two cases. The second two cases, P is true and Q is false. So this will be false for both of those. And the last four cases do not fall into the Q is false, P is true category. So they will all be true. Next, we can follow our guide table above to fill out our Q if and only if R column. So as a reminder, this will only be true if both Q and R are the same. So this first one will be true. The second one will be false, then false, then true true, false, false, and lastly, true. Great. So now that we have those two columns filled out, we can fill out our final column. So we have P implies Q or not Q if and only if R. So remember that an or statement is only false if both sides are false. And reminding and a reminder that the right side of our statement here will be the opposite of our column Q if and only if R. So for the first one, we have P implies Q is true. So right away, we know that this is true because the left side is true and they both need to be false for this to be false. So proceeding with that in mind, we will go ahead and put a true in all the rows where P implies Q is true. So that will make this true, this true, this true, this true, and this true. So now we only have two rows left. So taking the top one of those two empty spots, we have the case when Q if and only if R is false. Now a reminder that the right hand side of this OR statement is not Q if and only if R, which means that the right hand side will be true when Q if and only if R is false. So this top case will be true. And the converse is true for the second case where Q if and only if R is true, it will be negated, so it will be made to be false. And in that case, both P implies Q and not Q if and only if R are false, which makes this statement false. And this is the only case where that will be. So now that we finished this problem off, let's go ahead and get into our next example. So this problem says, prove the following logical equivalence. We have two sides to this equivalence. We have P and not Q implies R, and we want to prove that that's equivalent to not E and not Q or R. So we're going to do this the same way we have been doing. We are going to make a truth table for the left hand side and a truth table for the right hand side. And then we are going to show that the output for both sides is equal. And in doing so, we will prove the logical equivalence. Now, I'm not going to be using any guide tables because we've gone over all the rules that we need for these problems. So I'll go ahead and make logic tables for each side of this equivalence and we can get started. All right, so now we have our truth tables drawn out. So let's go ahead and fill out our first column for this top part, which is the left hand side of our equivalence here. So this column says P and not Q. And a reminder, the and statement is only true if both sides of the statement are true. So for this first case here, we have P is true, but not Q will be false. So this will be false. For this second case, it's the same as the first one. So this will be false. For this third case, we have P is true and Q is false, but we have not Q on the right hand side. So this will be true. Similarly, for the case below that, on this next one, we have P is false. So this will be false because the left hand side is false. And that will be the same for the rest of these in this column as if P is false, this AND statement cannot be true. So now that we have this column filled out, we can move on to the last column here, which will complete the left hand side of this equivalence, which is P and not Q implies R. Now, as a reminder, the conditional like this is only false if the right hand side of the conditional is false and the left hand side is true. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and fill out this column. So for the first case, we have that R is true, so this must be true. For the second case, R is false, but so is the left-hand side, so this will be true. For the third case, both are true, so this is true. For the fourth case, we have that R is false and the left-hand side is true, so that will make this false. For the next case, R is true and the left-hand side is false, so this will be true. For the next case, both are false, so this will be true. Then for the next case, R is true and the left-hand side is false, so we will have true. And then lastly, they are both false, so this will be true. Great, so we're left with a truth table that has three truths, 
that has three trues, one false, and then four trues. So if we've done this right, when we do the next table, that will be mirrored. All right, so from here, we can see that the first column on our second chart is just the negation of the first column on our first chart. So that means we can just flip all of the falses to trues and the trues to false and fill this out very quickly. So we will have true, true, false, false, and then four trues to finish off this column here. All right, so now that we have that information down, we can fill out our last column in our second chart. So keeping in mind that the OR statement is only false if both sides are false, let's go ahead and fill in a true for all places where R is true here, which will be on alternating rows. So we have true, 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 like that. So from here, we can go ahead and fill in the blanks. So for this first one, we have the left-hand side is true, so that will be true. For this next blank, we have both are false, so this will be false. For the next blank, we have that the left-hand side is true, so this will be true, and the same thing for the last one. Great. So we have three trues, one false, and four trues, which, if we did it right, yes, indeed, is exactly what we have for this top chart. So we have proven the logical equivalence given. So let's go ahead and move on to our next problem. So for our next problem, we will be proving another logical equivalence. So we have, on the left-hand side, we have a not P if and only if Q. And on the right-hand side, we have an OR statement with the left-hand side of the OR statement being P and not Q. And the right-hand side of the OR statement being Q and not P. We're actually very fortunate that there is no R included here, so we'll be able to make much smaller truth tables for this problem. So I went ahead and filled out the left-hand side of this logical equivalence right away, as it is just the negation of the P if and only if Q table. So now I'll go ahead and make a table for the right-hand side. Okay, great. So there's our truth table for the right-hand side of this equivalence. So let's begin by filling out the first column that we have here on the left. So this statement is P and not Q. So a reminder that an and statement is true only if both sides of the and statement are true. So for this first case, we have P is true, but not Q is going to be false because Q is true, which makes this statement false. Next, we have P is true, but Q is false, which means not Q will be true, and this statement will be true. Next, we have P is false, so this will be false, and that will be the same for this last one. P is false there as well, so this will be false as well. So for our next column, we have Q and not P. The logic to that and operator is going to remain the same. We've just switched the order of P and Q here. So for our first case, we have that P is true, but that means not P is false, so this will be false. Similarly to the last one, not P will be false here as well, so this will be false. Now for this one, not P will be true as P is false, and Q is still true, so this will be true. And lastly, Q is false for this one, so this will be false. Now to complete the side of the equivalence, we need to put these two together using an OR statement. Now a reminder, an OR statement is only false if they are both false. So to start in the top, we can see right away that they are both false, so this will be false. For the next one, we can see that the left side will be true, so this will be true. And for the next one, we can see that the right side will be true, so this will be true. And for the last one, they are both false, so this will be false. And once again, we can see that this false, true, true, false is exactly the same as what we got in our truth table above, which means we have proven this logical equivalence. Great. So let's go ahead and get into our last problem for this video. So once again, we are going to be proving a logical equivalence. We have on the left-hand side, P implies Q, and that whole statement will imply R. We want to prove that that is logically equivalent to the statement P and not Q or R. So let's go ahead and make these two big truth tables, and we can see if they are logically equivalent. All right, so I've created our truth table for the left-hand side of this logical equivalence. In the first column, we have P implies Q. In the right side, we have the entire left-hand side of that logical equivalence. P implies Q implies R. So this entire statement relies only on the conditional, so we'll be able to use the same logic for both this first piece, P implies Q, and the second piece. And hopefully at this point, you already know how these work. This conditional will only be false if the right-hand side is false and the left-hand side is true. So let's go into it with that in mind. So right away, we can go ahead and fill in true for all places where Q is true in the first column. So right away, we can go ahead and fill in true in all places on this column where Q is true. So we'll have true, 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 and true. Then from here, we can see that the bottom two both are false, so those will be true as well. And that leaves the last two cases, which is, of course, when Q is false and P is true, and those will be false. 
And we can apply the same logic of the conditional statement to the entire statement here on the left, which is P implies Q implies R. This entire statement will only be false when R is false and our first column is true. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and fill in true in all places where R is true. So this will be true, true, and we'll alternate on each row here. Great. So now we can fill in our blanks here. So for the first one, we have that R is false and our left-hand side is true. Well, that's, of course, going to be false. For our second case, they are both false, so this will be true. For our third one, we have R is false and our left-hand side is true, so this will be false. And the last one is the same as the one before it. We have that R is false and the left-hand side is true, so this will be false. Great. So let's go ahead and make a truth table for the right-hand side. And once we fill out that one, we will have proved this logical equivalence and finished our last problem for this video. All right, so here is our final truth table of this video. So in our first column, we have P and not Q. And once again, I'm going to remind you that an and statement is only true if both the left and right-hand sides are true. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and fill out this column really quickly. So this first one will be false as Q is true, and the same will be for the next row there. Now for this one, P is true and Q is false, but we have not Q, so this row will be true. Similarly for the one after that. So for this one, we have P is false, so this will be false, and that will be the same for the rest of the rows in this column, so we can fill in the rest of this chart as false. Great, so now we can look at the entire statement. So we have P and not Q, or R. And an OR statement is only false if both the left and right hand sides are false. So let's go ahead and look at the cases where R is true, and we can fill this in as true. R is true in alternating rows, so let's go ahead and fill in true on those alternating rows here. And from there, we can fill in the blanks where the left hand side is true, which will just be here. So we can now fill in these last three blanks. We can see in this first blank, we have both are false, so this will be false. And that will be the same for our remaining two blanks as we've eliminated all other choices. So our final column will read true, false, three trues, false, true, false. Let's see if that compares to the top one. So we have true, false, three trues, false, true, false, and indeed they do match up. So that proves this logical equivalence that we have at the top, and that finishes the last problem of this video off. Thank you all for watching, and that's a good place to stop.